What's up guys? It's your boy AG and today I am going to show you guys uh, a new agar recipe but I'm also going to show y'all how um, I pour two different bottles um, to do two different styles of plates. So we're going to do PP5 plates, uh, dishes, whatever and we're also going to do some portion cups. Um, we are going to do these guys at the exact same time um, but we're going to do a, a, a slightly different variation um, than, you're, than you're probably used to. So what we'll do is we'll mix everything up. Um, since these guys are going to be, this big dog's going to be a PP5, <clears throat> no poor tech. Um, this will be regular poor tech in front of my slow hood. So... Um, I'm going to show you guys how you can juggle both um, and still keep your temperatures from uh, varying because uh, you want them to. You want one to cool off while the other one is, is or well, you want one to cool off faster than you want the other one, um, obviously, so it doesn't solidify and you have to re-sterilize it. Um, by doing that, you'll see those little chunky burned up bits of sugars and... Um, nutrients um, in your plates you won't have those crystal clear plates like you really want to see so um let's get into it you need a couple things you need a digital scale spoon a couple media bottles dish um we're gonna do uh everybody's been asking about yeast uh yeast agar recipes whatever um and there are, you know, just straight up yeast, yeast uh, in light malt extract. Um, they're called, what are they called? Freaking LMEY or some shit. I don't know. Um, but I, I, my, I like to do a little different variation of that. Um, and then I'm not saying that um, I don't stick to, you know, the, the, the tech. Uh, because I always try to follow, um, you know, the way the tech is laid out. It, it's there for a reason because it's been proven to be successful for the guys that came, uh, the men and women that came before us. So, um, doesn't mean you can't make your own spin on, you know, your traditional, quote unquote, traditional agar recipe. Um, I'm going to use light malt extract. We're going to use yeast extract and we're going to use a little bit of dextrose. <clears throat> I noticed when adding a little bit of dextrose into my plates, not only was my growth uh, super strong, fast, um, but I noticed that um, uh, the, uh, the, the mycelium wasn't eating up all the food coloring, um, which doesn't make a difference one way or the other. Um, I just... I'm all about aesthetics as well as, you know, performance quality. You know, I want something to look cool too. Um, that's just how my mind works. Like I have to see something look super dope because then in my mind it registers like that I'm doing something correct. Even if I have a plate that looks dope, but the mycelium is eating up all the nutrients and the color. Then, you know, you got those pale yellow, whatever looking plates. It just, you know, I don't know. It doesn't fucking fucks with my head. So that's why I do a lot of shit I do because I'm not sitting obsessing over it for a fucking day or two. So on this big guy, um, also I wanted to add now, let's say portion cups, um, the majority of my portion cups I use for uh, liquid culture, and it's because of the ease, the ease of use to be able to transfer a uh, sectioned out, you know, cut up um, agar cup. You can just plop it right into a, an, a, a liquid culture um, jar. And there's just, it's just super easy. The motion, I have another video. I think I have a couple of videos on making a little culture. Um, but just, you know, the taking the cap off and just boom, boom. It's just a super easy, super fluid motion that just, I don't know. I like it. 
Um, but when making um, these guys, um, I also will use a little bit less agar powder. That way, leaving the plates a little less firmer. And then when you transfer them into your um, liquid culture jars and you mix them. So you'll see on the, the other videos, the liquid culture video, that I'll let them sit on my magnetic stir for like 24 hours after I mix them. What that does is actually turn uh, the agar, it emulsifies it. Um, and almost turns it into a liquid inoculant, which is different from a liquid culture. Um, I just find that doing them that way and, and running them on your spin table longer and breaking them up really good, um, you get a lot faster growth. I mean, super fast growth. I can, I can transfer a transfer cup into a jar and within a week, um, have usable liquid culture, sometimes less depending on the strand. So we'll do this guy first. <clears throat> With this guy, we're just going to do your, you know, regular amount. Actually, I do 18 grams, uh, nine and, uh, like if I was doing this irregular, it'd be just, uh, actually I do eight grams or usually on these small guys, but I notice when doing 16 on these big ones, um, they're just a little softer than I'd like. So I do 18 grams. And you might say that, oh, you know, well, why not just add the other two? Well, when making a shit ton of agar, like those two grams adds up, you know, I make freaking I don't know, a few hundred plates a week probably. And those two grams times, you know, 10, 20, whatever recipes. Um, yeah, that's a lot of fucking agar. So 18 grams agar powder. Then we're going to come over and grab our yeast extract. And we're going to do eight of this. Uh, let's see, that'd be 26. Do my math real quick. <laughs> I'll leave links of everything at the bottom of the description box. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, y'all, because I'm going to be doing... Um, a lot of people have been asking about crossing genetics and... Um, talking about the ghetto tech, whatever. I don't like that term. I like to use the term uh, swab roulette because it just sounds cooler to me. Sounds kind of James Bondy. Um, where's my... <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so I got some swab roulette videos coming up, a couple different part series. Is, and So hit that subscribe button and like button and all that good shit because... Uh, You'll get updates on all the new stuff I got coming out here. <laughs> okay. So we're going to come over here and do eight grams of light malt extract too, which is super, super chunky. So that'd be a. Uh, 26 would be 34. Sticking my spoon all crazy. Usually, I keep my um, light malt extract in um, a media bottle. That way, it's airtight and you don't get any. These will collect. That will pick up moisture out the air so fast. Agar powder and light malt extract powder especially um, will congeal fucking quick as shit at just, you know, in the open air. So, um, I'm actually about to dump this little bit in and wash this out. Um, 
because the cap, see, you'll see the caps. That's just from hitting the open air, you know, of using it, you know, for a couple of weeks or whatever. I wash this every time I empty one out and go through one about every couple of weeks or so. 34 grams total here. Now we're going to add, let me wash this off. We're going to add our dextrose. And uh, what else we got? And then we're going to add our uh, soy peptin. Uh, so we're going to do two grams. Oh, wait, no, four grams. Sorry, forgot some big bottle. Four grams of dextrose. You son of a bitch. We were at 34. So I need two grams. So let's say this happens to you. I knew I would always measure to the exact number you want. So I knew I was at exactly 34 grams, but that doesn't even matter uh, because I already know what I put in there. And then I know exactly what, you know, I'm going to put in. So I could have forgotten, oh, that's 25 grams. Who cares? Could be a million fucking grams. Um, as long as you, you know, make it on that exact, you know, 0 .00, um, you know, your, your, your measurements are always going to be fine because you know it's four grams of this. It's, you know, eight grams of this, eight grams of this, two grams of that, you know, whatever. Um, actually, I do a gram of peptin. A gram, sometimes two. It doesn't really matter. Oh, that's a little over. Be careful, too, because... Uh, no, it's not. It's four. I'm tripping. Um, dextrose weighs a lot more than it looks. Super heavy shit. Woo! A little bit over. That's all right. Okay. Then we're going to do, you can do between one and a half or so, two grams is fine. I like to do about a gram per 500 milliliters. So it's 435. So it's about a gram and a half or so, a little less. Okay. All right. Put that guy to the side. Now we're going to measure out our small jar. Since this guy is going to be the transfer cups, we're just going to do eight grams of that. Okay, man. Eight. We're going to do four, <clears throat> four grams of light malt extract, four grams yeast extract. This is how you guys seen the picture of my plates. See how I get the crazy ass looking ropey growth and shit. It's all these newts. Uh, eight, uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, or twelve, sixteen. <laughs> Sixteen and about a gram of peptin. And one point. One point one's cool. 
All right, now, if you have... Oh, wait, duh. I forgot to add my fucking... Losing my mind, motherfucker. And we're going to do... Two grams. Of dextrose. Okay, now we're good to go. Uh, if you have a tea kettle, uh, those are perfect, perfect for what your next step is. Um, I actually drink a shit ton of tea, so I have an electric one. That's boss. Because I also freaking need the real estate on my stovetop uh, for as many pressure cookers as I can fit. So having a kettle take up one burner just was not in the cards. Okay. Put all this shit away. Dump this in here to wash this when we're done. You do not want to keep light mold extract out at room room uh like in the room air open air is what I'm looking for. Sorry man I got really high before this video in the open air for too long because uh it'll freaking start to thicken up on you and shit okay while that's going um go ahead and soak this Give me one second here and i'll be back with y'all Sorry. Torch away, I promise. <laughs> One crucial thing, I'm sure um, any of y'all that are watching this that's new to the amazing world of agar um you're probably wondering why can't i get my goddamn plates to freaking stop sweating and have all this condensation and shit well i'm about to show y'all and it's really one key thing and that's it really is just the temperature you pour them at um you got to pour them when they're, you know, I, I try to pour them when they're under 115 degrees. I try to go to about uh, 112 or so, depending on how many I'm pouring and the style uh, I am pouring makes a difference or it makes a difference of uh, the temperature as well, too. If I know that I have a lot of plates to pour out of a thousand milliliter bottle. <clears throat> I'll probably start pouring at like 114. Um, if I have a 500 milliliter bottle and see if this, oh, I got it turned off. A 500 milliliter bottle, um, and I'm doing like no pour. Um, you know, I'll get that shit down to like freaking 112 or 110, sometimes even less. If you constantly have it on a magnetic, mag, ah. I really got high. I can't talk. A magnetic stir um, continuously spinning. It's going to, it has to get down, you know, to like around 100 degrees or less before it'll really start to solidify um, and congeal up on you. So you, you, you have a lot more temp to lose than you think. A lot of it's in your head. You think, oh, this is going to freaking, I'm going to ruin this shit. But you won't, I promise, because I'm about to show you that you won't. All right, we'll let this guy get up to a boil. It's another crucial thing you're going to need. Excuse me. Excuse me. Is. I can find my good one. Is a funnel. And you're going to want one 
This is my all time favorite funnel. I love this guy. It's got that big, like one and a half, one and a quarter inch um, spout on the bottom there. It fits like perfectly into a, in fact, there's a little trick you can do while we're waiting. I'll show you guys a really slick little trick. I haven't even done it on this guy yet. I got this one not too long ago. So take a heat gun. And you're just going to start going around the... Just start going around the edge. And then you can like form this perfectly to the spout. Having a heat gun <clears throat> in mycology, you wouldn't think you would need, but trust me, a heat gun works in so many different things. I use a heat gun for my cordyceps, making my gummies, get the bubbles out. It works so good for getting bubbles out of freaking liquids. There, yeah, see, it's getting nice and high. It's perfect. See, yeah, it's getting nice and pliable now. Hit this side real good. while it's still hot and then just hold it there and let it let it cool off can you see that hopefully you can see that yeah okay see before it was like freaking kind of janky and not like tight fitting and shit on there now look at that motherfucker boy what bloop what what you know about that what you know about that shit oh shit gangster as hell yes sir that's how we do it son okay so yeah heat gun dude is handy as shit for so many things it's literally like one of the main freaking tools I use in my arsenal. One of the main tools. Okay, that's the 500. This is, or that's the 1,000. This is the 500. Put that shit up. Water is a boiling. And go ahead and get your water to a boil, especially on the no pour. That's crucial. You want to let that shit boil until, you know, it, it's either hissing or, in my case, until the, the pot uh, shuts off. So we'll let it run its full cycle. Um, I use gel food coloring. If you want also to have a real good, vivid color in your plates, um, get gel food coloring. That will be crucial um, to having those really, really vivid looking colored plates. Okay, so we use boiling over here. Um, so what we're going to do, take your funnel out. You don't want to get any moisture in this thing until you dump this through it. Because obviously, remember what I told you about the light malt extract just picking up so much moisture out of the air? Well, um, <laughs> dumping it through a wet freaking funnel, it's, you, I mean, you're going to clog the shit and you're, it, it's, it'll still work just fine. You're just going to have a problem unclogging it and you can spill shit and. It's just a lot easier this way. What you want to do on your 1,000 milliliter bottle, fill them shits up about halfway, maybe a little less. 
a little less than halfway is fine. You just want a good like two, three, you know, inches or so at the bottom. Um, so that way when you can turn it on, you turn your magnetic stir, you can get a good, um, let's, let's make sure you can see that. Oh yeah, you can see that shit. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, you got a good, enough liquid to mix your, your mixture in. So what you want to do is just kind of spread it a little bit at a time. You don't want to dump it all in at once. Because you can knock your uh, magnetic stir rod off its base there, the, the little magnetic base it's on. And uh, you can get clumps in your shit and just freaking just a hassle. Don't worry about any of the shit that's sticking to the sides either because that's why you left room in... Uh, in the bottle to pour more water in. That's the reason why you did that. Okay. See, look at that. Just sitting for a few minutes. That light malt extract. All right. And then just kind of spin it around a little bit and try to hit the little sides. This thing is down here. There we go. See, I even dumped a little bit too much in on that time. And it just thickened up so much that it freaking... Caused the spinner to freaking either, I think it either stopped or it just really fell off its center. That's why you want to add that shit real slow. Now, also, if you're adding water to an already spinning media bottle, you're going to want to fill it up about a quarter inch past your 1,000 milliliter line. Um, obviously, because motion, um, you know, that, that spinning motion is going to cause your water to rise. See if you see, I'm, I'm just a little bit past, and see as it stops, it's below it. So, you're going to want to go, I like to go just a, a sea hair freaking over it. Just a sea hair. That's her. Okay. And I just like to spin her on high for a few minutes. We can actually take our spoon and dip her in because I uh, had a little bit of light mold extract on there. And it's okay if, you know, you don't think this, you know, your spoon was 100% sterile because obviously it's not. You're going to sterilize all this shit anyway, so it's totally cool. Don't even sweat it. So... Now what we're going to do, put the cap on them shits, let that spin for a minute or two, good to go, where's my other, oh, let me grab my other spinner, hold up. Mm -hmm. Thought I had it sitting there. Oh, you guys can still hear me. Okay. And again, we're just going to go up two, three, three, four inches or whatever. Go a little more in this guy. You're about halfway. All right. 
Oops. <laughs> this is also a really good recipe for slants having all those different sugars and nutrients the freaking uh it works really really it's a good recipe for slants man you're gonna get some really good long-term storage because you're you're allowing the mycelium you know different types of sugars and nutrients to feed off of um oh a little too much that's okay um yeah for that long-term storage it, uh, this is a great recipe now you can see i went over you know quite a bit and that's okay it's no big deal that actually see once it comes down it's actually just a sea hair above so it's it's not It's not that bad. All right. Now what you're going to do, check your temps. 168. It really doesn't matter what this guy is. Uh, this guy's going in the pressure cooker. It can go, and you can put it in there, you know, when it's done. I like to let them mix for a few minutes. Just to make sure that uh, with gel food coloring, sometimes if you don't use it all the time, it sits. Um it's gel <laughs> so it'll gel up and uh you know you just want a, a good few minutes of uh of spinning on your tables just to ensure that all that color is is good and mixed up okay, you're still on. Yep, cool. all right take this guy off you can put this guy right in your pc it's good to go no big deal all right what we're going to do now is we're going to continue to check this guy. We're at 160. Uh, let me see that. 166. Um, we're going to take a break. I'm going to come back when this guy's ready to pour. I got my PP5 containers. What we're going to do is get all those guys set up. This I'll go ahead and put uh, in. I'll take this to my lab and go ahead and put it in front of my flow hood to get ready for the pour on it with the 500 milliliter bottle um we're actually going to go ahead and pour all of our pp5 containers right out here in the open because they're going to get sterilized separately but together if that makes sense they're going to be separately, meaning that they're going to be sterilized inside of their PP5 containers, but together, meaning that they're going to go in the pressure cooker the same time as the 500 milliliter bottle, if that makes sense. Um, so basically, the 500 milliliter bottle is just sitting in my pressure cooker right now, and, you know, it, it can solidify. It's, that's fine. I could care less. Um, it's not going to hurt that one bit. All right, make sure your area is good and sterile. I love those Clorox wipes, man. Them things are the freaking shit, especially for stainless uh, tables. They're amazing. Okay, go ahead now and get your PP5 container set up here. They're off to the cut. You can't probably see them. I don't know if you can. Yep, just barely not. <laughs> Now, I like to put uh, um, filter stickers over, over well, I, cut, I drill little holes in them. Um, it just, I, I think it just allows the plates to breathe a lot better than if you don't. Some people I've seen use them don't, and, uh, you know, they work fine for them. I find that if you don't, um, because of them being a no pour, even though you're going to pour these, at a temperature that normally would not cause condensation, but because you're going to let them solidify, um, then we're going to wrap them in foil and then we're going to pressure cook those all together with the 500 milliliter bottle. Um, they'll get wrapped around the perimeter and then that bottle will go right in the center. 
Um, but by doing that, um, shit, what was I saying? I totally slipped my mind, my short-term memory. Um, um, I fucking totally forgot what I, my whole fucking goddamn point. I'm losing my fucking mind. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. But you're going to find some condensation um, just because, you know, they solidified once and then they went through the pressure cooker. Um, but pouring them at that lower temperature um, will cause... I mean, to put this differently. Yes, you're going to get a little condensation, but um, if you pour these... Um, with enough lead time, meaning that like I'm pouring these, I'm not going to use any of them for probably a week or so because I already have some in my lab ready to roll. I just always like to be, you know, a couple, a batch or two ahead. I, I you know, so I basically have about half of this many or so in my lab ready to go. <clears throat> so, and then that, in that week, um, the little bit of condensation that's um, you know, in the plates will totally evaporate and they'll be perfectly ready to roll. So, um, there's a little bit of method to, or a little bit of trick to them, but nothing, nothing too crazy. So we're going to let this get down to about one fourteen or so, or then while we're going to come back, I'm going to show you guys how I pour everything up. Um, then we'll probably take another little break, let them solidify and we'll come back and I'll show you how I wrap everything, PC everything. And then in the last part, um, we'll be uh, doing these guys as well, too, in the lab in front of the flow hood. And then I'll also be explaining um, some uses and um, um, a few different uses that I, you know, um, use these guys for. Uh, like I said, long term storage, liquid culture, um, but they work amazing for agar to grain transfers as well, too. So. Um, we'll get into all that shit. Um, I think I got a few videos on them, but I'm, I'm going to be updating everything um, in the new lab, in the new place. Uh, I'm in my forever lab, at least until I buy my land and start the off-grid 420 bed and breakfast. So um, in the meantime, uh, let's let these guys get down to temp and we will be back. I cannot tell you guys how much I appreciate the support. Um, please, please hit that subscribe button. Um, we're over a thousand subscribers and we're, we're growing every day. So just, just keep on, keep on keeping on guys. I, I can't tell how much I appreciate y'all, man. Peace. We'll be back. What's up guys. It's your boy, AG. And we are back with part two of this yeast based. I got a recipe. Actually, I wouldn't say yeast based, but, uh, Let's just say it's a, a Y L M E Y L M E D <laughs> light malt extract yeast and dextrose agar based recipe. All right, bet. So right now, if you can see, I think you can see that we're at one thirteen. Actually, it's about one fourteen, one fifteen. The closer you get, obviously, you know, if the, the farther your laser pointer is away from the media it bottle, it, the uh, the cooler it is. Obviously, the farther the light uh, beam has to travel, it's less accurate. Um, so, anytime you're taking a measurement and you want to be as accurate as possible, try to get it about an inch or so, um, you know, distance from your media bottle. So, we're at about a buck fifteen. That's perfect. Um, now, you don't need gloves for this pour. Um, you can if you want. I find, uh, you know, unscrewing and screwing these containers in is just a little easier with gloves or with my gloves off, without gloves, whatever. I need to stop fucking smoking and getting higher during my breaks here. Um, what I like to do is um, I like a, a good fat freaking... Um, I like a fat freaking plate. I like my shit about, you know, an eighth inch... Um, I just, that's just me. That's just what I like. I like to have a nice thick freaking plate. I can't stand, you know, having such a thin little piece of pancake bullshit that you can't even, you know, you got to scrape the motherfucker just to get a transfer off the shit. It's, it's ridiculous. But I find if you put, um, your bottle on the edge, um, and as well as the, um, 
PP5 dish, you can get a really good muscle memory going with your wrist after just a couple of uh, pours, you know. What I do is I pour it, and as the liquid is filling all of the, um, it's filling the whole bottom in, right as that last little gap right there, I'll pour it an extra second. And then that gives me that perfect eighth inch. So just like one second past of the point that they look for the liquid, you know, covers that whole bottom of the container. Um, I actually usually pour them a lot closer to where I'm storing them to. I was trying to get as much a, of, a, you know, the shot in the view as possible. slide these bad boys over. Now you're going to let these totally cool and solidify because if you don't and you try to put foil on them you're going to have the shit splashed all over the fucking place and all that time and energy you just spent on this shit be wasted. Also if you don't want to <clears throat> pour plates on a you know lopsided looking dish if these are not meant to be slants <laughs> if they're meant to be just regular plates um, make sure your tables are level um, these are you know self-leveling not self-leveling but they got screws on each base uh, or each leg um, that you know you just twist to level them off um, that way you know as your plates are drying and uh, cooling off or whatever, not drying, cooling off. God damn, I'm high. Um, you know, they're going to be pretty even. Which is what you want. Also, if, um, like, for me, I have, you know, probably 40 or 30 or 40 plates um, already chilling. Um and I've actually had them a little bit longer than I needed to because, well, mental health is a motherfucker. And sometimes I have spells where, like, it's hard for me just to leave my house, let alone, like, do any mycology work. So I suffer from really, really bad agoraphobia. And it's getting better, but there's times where, like, it'll take me four or five hours just to leave my house to go, like, to the store. So it's uh, it's been challenging this year with some personal things that have been going on with my family. And, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. I keep trucking and I always try to tell myself the days that I don't want to do my college work are the days that I need to do my college work. It's like it's actually a cliche in AA that they say, you know, the days you don't want to go to an AA meeting are the days you have to go to an AA meeting. So, you know, this is my recovery. My ecology saved my life. And it's these, you know, these are my meetings. When I'm sitting in front of my flow hood, I'm not just thinking about the strand that I'm transferring or, you know, uh, the piece of agar that I'm freaking cutting or poke punching or whatever the fuck you want to, you know, call it. I'm also thinking about, you know, the stresses and things that are going on in my life and how to handle certain things. And I don't know, my college just really saved my life. It came into my life at the perfect time that I needed it to. <laughs> okay. See, I don't know if you can see, but like there's just a smidge of condensation. And I'll show you too uh, after they solidify. They'll uh, there won't be hardly any moisture at all in them. That's why, I like you know, waiting till they get down to that you know one fifteen, one sixteen, you know one eighteen or under. I I I think even that might be a little too hot. I like to do one fifteen and under, or you know. 116 maybe at the highest, but I've poured plates, you know, down into the freaking under 110 before, and uh, 
you know, it was starting to clump up a little bit there at the end, but I managed to get them all poured just fine. So again, you know, the, uh, make that little fanner. The, uh, the more you let it, the agar uh, cool off, obviously, the less condensation you're going to have. But I love these little PP5 containers. I'll leave links for these, for all the nutrients that I use, all uh, the, uh, uh, the peptin. And I even believe uh, I can find the gel food coloring. Any gel food coloring <clears throat> from Amazon is going to work just fine. Um, I've used a few different brands uh, of gel food coloring, and they all work, you know, pretty pretty well and just about the same. And like I said, after a few pours, man, you'll get that muscle memory down to where you're pouring them, you know, pretty much, you know, dead on almost every time. Now, since we got that other media bottle in the pressure cooker, well, in one of my pressure cookers, um, it's probably already half solidified which is fine um, because we don't want to pressure cook that any of them twice. Uh, now you can, let's say um, I run that bottle, I, I pressure cook it, you know, and I, I'm pouring in front of my flow hood and something happens where I need to, you know, uh, screw the cap on and put it up and go do something and it solidifies. I can come back and, and re-pressure cook that. And actually, in fact, you don't even have to totally pressure cook them. Um, all you really need to do is um, just, you know, do it the same way you would normally. You're just not running it as long. You're only running it until it gets up to, um, depending on the size of the bottle. But if you have about a half a bottle or so, <laughs> you only need to run it for a few minutes at 15 PSI and it'll be liquefied, you know, again. And then it's be totally good to re-pour. Um, but like I said before, you will notice, um, you know, little, little darker flakes in your agar, which is just, you know, the sugars that have cooked a little bit, you know, they've caramelized, um, which isn't really, um, you know, going to hurt it a ton. Um, you might see a little bit lacking in performance just because, you know, some of those nutrients are, uh, you know, kind of caramelized, but, uh, you know, you can, you can use that agar just fine. You really ain't going to have too big of an issue with it. Especially with all the nutrients I put in mine, you know, with the light malt extract, the yeast, and the uh, dextrose. It really gives you, uh, you know, a little player pinch of, of all three. Uh, that just, man, makes it a fucking outstanding goddamn agar plate, I swear. <laughs> Sometimes you'll get these older cups that are a little deformed, and you just got to really just press them all the way in, and they're, they're fine. <clears throat> but after these solidify, we'll wrap them all in tin foil. I know it can be a little bit of a pain in the ass, but uh, wrap them all in foil, plop them into PC for 45 minutes or so, along with that other jar. And then when they get done, what we'll do, since my stove I know is not 100% level, um, I actually will put a uh, a towel down on this table and I'll transfer my the whole freaking pressure cooker uh, you know still pressure and all over to this table so that way as it's depressurizing and cooling off it's doing it on a you know straight up level you know plain planed up level surface 
It's just flatter and shit. So that way you know you got 100% flat uh, agar plates. And like I said before again too, um, <clears throat> I do say like I, like I said before a lot. Um, they're going to shrink a little as they, you know, as you store them, like I got mine stored on a, just a shelf above my flow hood. And, you know, as they store, um, and the moisture inside the plates, uh, evaporates, you know, they're going to shrink a little bit on you. Uh, that's again, uh, why I also like to pour them a little fat too, because if they shrink up just a little, let's say like, you know, I get a little busy in another area and have to, you know, uh, not uh, do any freaking transfers or isolations for a few. Uh, yeah, I know that those plates are still going to be good to go and use and be just fine and still pretty fresh when I come back a week or two later um, when I'm doing that type of work again, you know. And don't forget to subscribe, you guys, because like I said before, <laughs> like I said before, um, I'm going to be doing that, uh, I think it'll be a two or three part, three or four part series on um, Swab Roulette. Um, also, uh, I'm going to be doing a video on cloning fruits. Um, what else? I'm going to do some more updated. I'm also going to do an updated how to shred a brown rice flour jar to a tub. Um... I might even do an updated brown rice flour video when I'm making the jars for that first video I talked about. So, um, then I got a bunch of gourmet shit coming up too. Uh, you've I've got some wheat straw blocks. I'm going to be making master mix blocks, of course. Um, and then brand, I've been making some brand blocks as well. So, uh, I'll show you guys the recipes on those. Um, the, that wheat straw I've been using, man, it's killing it with the moisters. They love that freaking wheat straw, man. I got to, I use wheat straw <clears throat> with a, uh, uh, what else do I put in that shit? I forget if it's, uh, I think it's wheat straw and then my, um, I think I'm using a three, three blend hardwood pellets i think in there i can't remember i just started making those those straw blocks so i don't remember off the top of my head exactly the recipe but they do colonize really fast incubation times pretty quick too on most everything oysters lines mains so yeah i'm loving them they're they're uh Turn out pretty good. Okay, so we're almost finished up here. Also, if uh, if you guys are looking for any products, don't forget to go to my site. Should be at the bottom of the screen. And uh, check out all the dope ass products I got. I'm gonna be uh, updating some shit here soon. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna make a uh, an agar. I'm gonna create some type of agar starter pack with some swabs and like five or ten plates or something, um, just for people that are just getting into agar work. That way they can. Uh, they don't have to buy, you know, a whole 10 pack. They can just buy like a five pack with a couple of swabs and, you know, start uh, playing around that way and getting there. Honestly, man, when it comes to agar work and shit like that, it's, it's all muscle memory, man. It really is like once you get your muscle memory down, you'll be freaking transferring agar like a fucking pro, son. Like a pro, Joe. Don't you know?
bro. It's like, I'm gonna stop that shit right now. <laughs> okay. Alright. And see, so basically, <clears throat> after these will get done pressure cooking, we will bring it over to this table so that way as it's cooling. Uh, but once the pressure depletes, we will take our other jar or uh, our other media bottle out. And I'll take it into my lab and let it start spinning on a stir table I have in there. Um, so that way, by the time it's just about ready, um, these plates should be solidified or pretty close to it. So by the time I'm done pouring those transfer cups in my, in my lab in front of my flow hood, um, I can come back and take all the foil off. You don't want to keep the foil on these. You want to let the air exchange holes do what they're there for, to exchange the air. <laughs> um, that's crucial. That's going to give you that little bit of evaporation that you want because, like I said, like I said, you're going to have a little condensation no matter what. I don't care if you pour these motherfuckers at fucking goddamn 50 degrees. <laughs> you're going to have condensation because obviously putting them in a pressure cooker, bringing them up to pressure and temp, it's just what it is. But an easy way to get around that, obviously, like I said before, <laughs> um, the initial first pour, you know, pouring them under 115 is, is key because you don't have all the buildup of moisture already. And to already have condensation as they're solidifying the first time just adds to the condensation when they solidify the second time. If that makes sense. Which I hope it does. Okay. A few more. Ooh, that one's a little fat, but that's okay. I remember when I was give, first getting into my college, I would do some trades with some people, and I won't name names or nothing, but god damn, these people freaking would send me the most thinnest fucking plates. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, you know, even besides being a noob, uh, even now, like when people send me flat ass little tiny plates that have barely freaking any agar on them, like it just is a pain in the ass to get a good transfer. Plus, um, to have that, to have a good, you know, eighth inch chunk, especially when transferring into those transfer cups, um, because there's just a little bit of surface area and, you know, in the angle you have to take, um, Having that little eighth inch chunk really makes a big difference when plopping it off your scalpel onto that uh, transfer cup. Because if not, you're going to be stabbing the shit out that fucking thing and it just, it fucks your whole agar up because the mycelium grows all weird and shit because of those little crevices along the, the agar from you stabbing the shit out that thing. <laughs> Okay, probably just a few more here, and then we can cut for a minute, and then I'll come back, and we'll show you guys, uh, I'm not gonna make you watch me wrap all of these, just the last couple, so I'll be back after these chill literally chill and solidify and harden up and uh slap some foil on them i'll show you how i place them in the pc basically just right around the perimeter i just stack them up just like you would a brick you know offset um you know each each row up is offset 
and um yeah it's pretty pretty simple shit man pretty straightforward let's do one more wall two Yeah, we need two more. Well, one more now. Giggity goo. All right. Look at that shit. Perfect. Come on, sucker. All right. Stack them shits and let them chill until they solidify. Come back. We're going to wrap them in foil. We're going to pressure cook them shits for 45 minutes. 40, 45 minutes is cool. Always, always try to do at least 40. Um, that'll guarantee that you know that shit is, uh, is sterile. So, um, we will be back. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, y'all. See you in just a few. Peace. What's up, guys? It's your boy, AG. And we are back. And I'm going to show you all real quick how to wrap a couple of these bad boys up. <clears throat> and then uh, we're going to pack them in the PC. So you're just basically just capping the tops of these. And then you're just kind of, that way they can still sit level, but they won't have a bunch of moisture pouring into them during the sterilization process. All right. <laughs> Okay, and you can see, like, they have, like, no moisture in them at all. Yeah, I'll even open it for you, see? Uh, yeah. See? No moisture. Just a little tiny bit of condensation around the inside rim, but uh, that'd be totally fine. And since I'm going to sterilize this here in a second, anyways, opening it up won't make one bit of difference. Okay. Couple more here. We're going to PCD for 45 minutes. Yeah, that'll ensure that uh, that bottle is good and sterile as well as these bad boys too. Plus, I need to run to the store and it takes me about 30 minutes to go there and back. So, <laughs> 45 gives me plenty of time. Even though you should not leave your pressure cooker unattended. That is not what I'm telling you to do. <laughs> I do just because I'm a freaking an idiot sometimes. No, I'm kidding. I just know that, you know, I can, I can set it on a temp. After its initial buildup, <clears throat> it starts hissing like crazy. And you turn your shit down. You turn the dial down and then it goes back down and then it has to like, I call it the, the bounce back. So then it'll bounce back and, and then it'll stay right at the pressure that, uh, that, you know, you have it set on whatever, you know, you have your dial at, but, um, you're always, even if you turn it down just a little bit, it's always going to lose that little bit of pressure and then bounce back up. 
once once the build really that build up really you know happens and it and the the uh pressure is really you know the pc's full there's no space left that's when that pressure really rebounds back up and and that's when you know you know once it's on once it's once it's bounced back and you have it set on the dial that you know you know that that's going to stay right about 16 and a half psi you know you don't really need to sweat it too too much i know it's not gonna you know explode so i don't sweat it basically well, all you're doing is just putting putting these guys right around the rim the perimeter of uh of your pressure cooker i'll show you here in a second i'll maneuver that guy yeah, no shit. I say pc's a lot smaller i knew the inner dimension was a little bit smaller than my 23 quart but I didn't know it was that small. That's all right. Just gap these a little bit. Instead of putting them right next to each other, there'll be just a little gap in between them, which is fine. Ain't nothing but a thing. You don't have to be, you know, perfectly spaced as long as there's a little gap in between the air hole there for them to release and a little bit of pressure it's all good okay Now that bottle that I put in earlier, it's actually just about solidified. Actually it has, there's just a little tiny bit left. That's not, you can see. So it's all good though. It'll, it'll reliquify right back up and just a few minutes of being under the pressure, it'll be fine, you know, to, to, uh, to pour when it's ready. In fact, if if I were to have PC that a second time, remember, like I said, <laughs> you'll cook some of those sugars in there and still be a usable plate. You just will see those little bit of flakes. You won't have a totally crystal clear, you know, plate. And if you're as OCD as I am, like that shit really fucks with my head bad. I'm talking like losing sleep over shit, obsessing. Okay. So, that's basically what you're, what you're looking for, something like that. And we're just going to put this bad boy right in the middle. And that's her. Slap the lid on, put it up to pressure, 45, and she's done. Oops. That's for my other pressure cooker. All right, guys. I'll be back. When this guy's done, we'll be back here. I'll show you guys. Uh, you know what? Let's see here. Do I want to do a... Maybe I'll do a transfer cup video in, my, in another video. That way, this one's not so long. Yeah, let's wrap this motherfucker up. All right, cool. Wrapping it up. We're done with this one. PC... 15, 16 PSI, 45 minutes. Take them out. Let them chill on a shelf. Make sure you take that foil off. Um, or they will they will definitely mostly retain uh, a lot of moisture. So always take those uh, pieces of foil off before you put them on the shelf. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And any comments, please shoot them my way, guys. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. I appreciate all y'all's support. And I wouldn't be doing this without you guys. So... From the bottom of my heart, I couldn't tell you how much uh, I appreciate it. So thank you guys.
Peace.